Hi, welcome again. And now we will continue our learning on gas pressure transient analysis or gas well testing analysis or gas well deliverability analysis. And in previous videos, we have discussed the analysis using theoretical method. And in this video, we will solve or we will calculate a gas well deliverability using empirical method or it is also well known by the term CNN method. All right, so as usual, we have our gas well test data table here. We have several columns, the period, and then the duration in hours, the choke size opening if you have the data, and then gas flow rate, static bottom hole pressure in PSIG and PSIA, and flowing bottom hole pressure, and also the column for this calculation. And in this video, we get the data in terms of pressure drawdown. So we have static bottom hole pressure data, and we have the, the drawdown pressure. We will calculate the flowing bottom hole pressure. All right. So first, I want to refill the duration here. So we perform multi-rate well tests for a specific or a particular gas well. Our gas well has a tubing with internal diameter of, for example, 2.441 inch. And we know the depth of our well. It extends down to 6,000 feet. And then we perform gas well testing to obtain or to know the deliverability analysis and we will solve we will analyze we will evaluate the deliverability using empirical method or cnn method or rowlin and Sheldard method so we have several or four flowing periods and each period we also have shut-in period so the first one We've, we start with static bottom hole pressure measurement, and we know that the bottom hole pressure is 7,121 PSIA. And then we do the flowing period, the first flowing period for nine hours, followed by shutting of nine hours. So we actually do modified isochronal tests. Okay. So in the note section, we perform modified ISO chronal test with three ISO chronal steps and followed by stabilization stabilization or PSS pseudo steady state flow, something like this. All right. So by isochronal steps, I mean flowing period followed by shutting period. So here, isochronal steps flowing plus shutting and followed by stabilization or PSS pseudo steady state flow period. All right, so that's the test. So the first one is nine hours flowing followed by nine hours shut in. For example, we don't know the chalk size, but we know the flow rate, this one. I will refill the data. Okay, so we know the data the first, second, and third. And for the fourth period, we do the stabilization, all right, or pseudo steady state flow period for one hour, 20, one hour, 20 hours, 120 hours for five days, okay? We need to flow our well for this long to achieve or to obtain pseudo steady state flow regime. And that's very, very important to know our gas well deliverability. 
So we, you can also call this one transient flow, transient and transient, and then this one is PSS, pseudo steady state flow. Okay. And yeah, we know the flow rate. And then I will refill the static bottom hole pressure. Actually, no, the PSIA. So the first one is 7,101 PSIA, the static bottom hole pressure after nine hours of shutting. And then 7,085 PSIA after nine hours of shutting for the second period. And then for the third period, 7,070 PSIA. And for the final one, we actually don't perform shutting after PSS flow of 120 hours, but we can input the initial static bottom hole pressure data that we obtain before the well test, which is 7,121. So I will put that data here. All right. And then in this test, we also know the drawdown pressure. So the first one, 905 PSIA, the drawdown pressure. And then the second one, 1,156. And then 1,802. And the last one, the stabilization period, 2,050. So if we know the PWS, static bottom hole pressure, and the drawdown pressure, we can calculate the flowing bottom hole pressure. All right. By simply this one minus the drawdown. So it's very easy. Okay. And then, yeah. So you can calculate the PSIG from PSIA, right? By using this formula, very simple one for PWS and PWF. And for the last column, it's very easy. PWS squared minus PWF squared. We use the PSIA here. Okay, so we complete the, this table and we go to the second step is plotting the PWS squared minus PWF squared versus the flow rate on a log log plot. And we already did that. Okay, so first I want to plot the transient flow or the transient periods. So you see, we have these three red dots. And then I plot also the PSS flow, the blue dot. I want to maximize maybe here. I want to zoom in. So starting from, okay. So it becomes bigger and maybe, or maybe we already satisfied with that. Okay, maybe this one. All right, maybe or not. What about using five? All right, just to do the zoom in. And this one also five. All right, and then like this, this one, two, seven, maybe. Yeah, we will go with that. So we have the regression using the three transient periods. All right, and the last one is the stabilization period. Okay, or the PSS period. But we can start from scratch again. So this one, right click, select data. I want to add the transient period, the X values, the horizontal Access, we use the flow rate, the three data, and then the 
vertical axis, we get that from this column there. And then format series, I don't want to make line out of it. And then marker, I want to select this one and then make it a bit bigger. And then for the marker, fill yellow for the border red. And then let make this one also for the filling, maybe green, and then the size also big. All right, so that's good. And then we want to do trans regression, I mean, using this period, the transient periods. So you see the line there, display the equation and the R squared. But by the way, be careful. This should be I just just want to see all right this one not this one. Regression, right click, trend line, and then, yep, we use power. So you know here, this one, and then let's change it to red, like this, a bit bolder. And we get the equation make it to 12 or 15, all right. And then let's make the feeling like this. Okay, so you get the power there. And this is in the, the form or the, yeah, the form of our equation is this one, something multiplied by x powered by 1.0813, all right? And you can change this into linear equation because here we plot by using log log plot, right? You can change it to linear equation, but we will skip that. This is the practical way to do that. So actually the, the power, 1.0813 actually is the slope, okay? The slope of this equation. So the equation is like this, the flow rate equals to C multiplied PWS squared minus PWF squared powered by N, okay? So this is the original form. And of course you can change it to linear form. Okay, but we will skip that step and you can do the derivation, but long story short, this, this power is actually the slope. But we need to calculate the N by using one divided by the slope. And we get the N of 0 0.92, all right? So N, in our CNN equation, N is 0 0.92, right? So maybe I can make the equation here so that we can understand it better. All right, so merge flow rate is C and then PWS minus PWF squared close and then powered by N. All right. Okay, let me make it bigger like this and then make it as subscript and then this one as sub superscript. Beautiful. And then this one 
subscript, that one superscript. Lastly, the end, the exponent superscript. All right. Okay, so n is 0 0.92. n is between 0 0.5 to 1, okay? n equals to or approaching 0 0.5 means turbulent flow. And then n close to 1. Point O means laminar flow. Okay, something like this. And then maybe 12, maybe 14. Okay. Yep, so to calculate the C, just rearrange the equation. First, we need to get the flow rate from the stabilization period, the longest period or pseudo steady state period, the flow rate is 14,000 MSCFD and the pressure squared different. We get that from that here. Yeah. And then the N, we get that from here. So that by using this equation, C equals to flow rate divided by delta P squared powered by N, we get the C using this equation of 0 0.002 MSCFD per PSI square, right? So now we know the C, we know the N, we know the PWS and PWF in pseudo steady state flow. We can create the IPR, yeah? So if you change Q to maximum Q or absolute open flow, of course, you need to change PWF to zero. All right. Yeah. So. This one, 214, is actually zero PSIG. So if you change it to PSIA, it should be 14.65 and then if you square this value you will get 214 this one okay but we will arrive at that so first we take the c from that and then pr average reservoir pressure or pws static bottom hole pressure they are almost the same we get that from this one so the static bottom hole pressure, the representative static bottom hole pressure before the well testing. So it is 7,121. We use the N from that. And then the absolute open flow is actually C multiplied by, within parentheses, the PWS squared minus 14.65 squared this one, which is this one, 214, and then close, divided by 1,000, because we are in MSCFD. Okay, and then don't forget, we power this one using N equals to 0 0.92. So if we use MMSCFD, million standard cubic feet per day, so the absolute open flow is close to 27, all right? Yeah. Okay, so if that is the absolute open flow, now we can solve the, or we can construct the IPR, inflow performance relationship, again, using this equation. So first we need to take the static bottom hole pressure, PWS, or the average reservoir pressure, Okay, 7,121. And then the PWF, you can start from 100% of PWS down to 90%, 80, 70% down to, yeah, this one, 14.65.
okay? And then the flow rate, you can just calculate using this formula. So C, you know the C, or maybe I can show you, all right? C, I press F4 because I want to use it again and again, multiplied by this one, average reservoir pressure or static bottom hole pressure squared. I need to use F4 or dollar and then squared minus PWF, this one in this column and then squared again and then powered by N and then we press F4, that one, this should be zero, okay? Because at static bottom hole pressure, so there is no flow. Okay, so I just drag it like this and we have the IPR, very simple, like this. And we can also plot the well test data. I take the data from this one, okay? And then, sorry, this should be PWF. So take that from this one. All right, and then also take the flow rate here. And then, yeah, this is the stabilized flow, okay? So there. So the IPR curve, okay, overlaid with this stabilized flow. And I want to put my star there. All right, so yeah, we already solved it. We analyzed the deliverability of our well. We create the plot. We get the N value, we get the C value, all right? And then we construct the IPR and we know the absolute open flow or the maximum flow rate. So this is our gas well deliverability. So that's all. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope this video is useful. Thank you so much and see you again. Thank you.